Are role-playing games a way for us to experience things that we wouldn't get to do normally? If so, how does that work and why? So this isn't exactly a new concept. Many of the things that we do in life are really just an alibi for some other activity we'd rather be doing. For example, you can't get into fights in polite society unless it's a part of a martial arts, particularly one based on competition like mixed martial arts or boxing. But there's more to it than just violence. Kids playing doctor, adults playing twister. These are just really alibis to touch each other. And let's not even get into truth or dare. But you might be wondering how this fits into role playing games. Well, for good or ill, certain behaviors do find their way into our games. And the first one that most people are probably thinking of is antisocial behavior, where it's masked by what their character would do. Another one is simply violence. There's most certainly people who find a certain catharsis in the violence of role playing games. And there's to a greater degree, the exploration of certain themes, be it power, gender, risk, whatever the case might be. Things that you cannot approach normally in society. Now it's my belief that a stronger frame also lends itself to a stronger alibi. So a character who is very obviously distinct from your own personality, you might feel a little bit more comfortable taking them through situations that you would not feel comfortable doing yourself. Compare that with a game such as a flower for Mara, which is a very, very high level of bleed between you and your character. That game gives you a very, very thin alibi, and a player might find themselves a little bit concerned with how their views and their actions are taken by the other players. Some of you might also be wondering, is the game master an alibi? After all, they're in control of the session, so wherever the game may go, as long as somebody else is at the wheel, I'm not really blamed for my actions. And you're absolutely right, the game master is an alibi in your game. Now if this concept seems like one that you'd want to play with, I'd recommend a game called Everyone is John. Now, Everyone is John allows players to set their own goal, and encourages that goal to be absurd or dangerous or both. But the big question is, why does this work? Surely our minds know the difference between what happens at a gaming table and what happens in real life. Well, cognitive psychology and neuroscience have a theory that suggests that we really don't. That our mind experiences an emotion first and understands it later. Therefore, what happens within the magic circle feels real in that moment. So where does all this leave us? Well, it's related to why we game, which is a fundamental question. If players understand that they may be gaming as an alibi, that understanding might help them enjoy their gaming sessions more and understand what they want out of their experience. Links for Blackboards and Minute Games are on screen and below. Video replies and comments are very welcome. And if you're interested in playing a game that I've talked about, I would like to try to open this up on Google+. There is a link for the notes as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope that every game that you have is better than the last.